Good afternoon, students. I do have to say, it does feel a little bit odd to be included in a history course, considering that I'm still alive. But anyways, aside from that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. On August 12th, 1942, I was born in Albany, New York. And many years later, I graduated Princeton with a degree in philosophy. Afterwards, I taught a few years at Cornell University, but eventually came back around and earned my PhD in psychology at the University of Pennsylvania in 1967. So far, I published over 350 scholarly publications and books. Let me tell you a little bit about how I became interested in positive psychology, because that's what people know me for. <laughs> Around 1967, I believe it was, I did research on learned helplessness in animals and human beings. And long story short, I discovered that when people feel that they have no control over their situation, they tend to give up rather than fight for control. And so from that moment, psych positive psychology called to me just as the burning bush did to Moses. In 1998, Actually, just when a couple of you guys were born, I was elected as the president of the United States. Just kidding. I was president of the American Psychological Association. Some of you guys call me, sorry, people call me the father of positive psychology. But I don't want you to mistake that for psychology as a happyology. While I am interested in, you know, understanding how to measure things like happiness and comfort and joy and positive psychology, it, it positive psychology doesn't just end there, let me tell you. As a positive psychologist, I get to study what makes life the most worth living. You know, psychology has a tendency to answer the question, what is wrong with you? And it focuses a lot on treating pathologies and mental illnesses. Yet in the positive psychology field, instead of asking what is wrong with you, we ask what is right with you? Why not analyze what is right with people rather than what is wrong? You might be thinking, well, what defines well-being? Well, let me share with you briefly five things that I believe every flourishing individual has. This includes positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishment. And now it looks like I'm running out of time here, but I encourage you to read my book Flourish to understand these elements more in depth. And thank you so much for your time. I wish you guys the best of luck in your doctoral program.